Hey guys, welcome back to Mitza Creek Farm. We're a diversified farm in northern Wisconsin. Uh, today is all about mum irrigation, drip irrigation, and how our drip system is set up. It is a question I get a lot, and I went through some of it. Uh, I'll post the link here uh, from the video that I made last year on how we do the basic irrigation information. But today I am going to show you specifically how we do the mummy irrigation. We are redoing it all this year. We've had an issue with the pump and uh, every year we just kind of add a little bit more. And this year was, uh, last year was the last year that we could kind of hodgepodge things together. So I said, we're starting it all over this year. We're getting new uh, main line and uh, what would these lines be called? Secondary lines, I think. So I thought this would be a great time to show you guys since my new fertilizer pump is here. I wanna get it up and running and show you guys what I'm doing. All right, so we're gonna start right here at our water spigot here in our high tunnel. This is the main line coming in. Ignore all the other uh, irrigation uh, lines in here. Those are for other things. So we're just focusing on the mums right now. And the mums are the only thing that get fertilizer. The mums and flowers are the only thing that get fertilizer out of the fertilizer injector. So we have the water coming into this uh, spigot here and it has a splitter on it. This is for my fresh water. This is for the line that goes to the fertilizer pump. So I have this, it's like a three foot, two foot garden hose and it goes to this three quarter inch irrigation tubing. You could just use a garden hose for this part. That's not an issue. I was just using what I had. And so I got these guys here more kind of permanently so that it goes into the fertilizer injector. So this is the main line, it goes into here. This is the fertilizer pump. I bought this uh, just so that I would have something because our other one was broken and I do not recommend this. This was uh, I thought it would be a good like backup in case of emergency and it does not come out consistently. So it is totally not worth the money. I'm actually returning this and I am replacing it with the good one. So I got to take this off today. But then from here, this is where the main header line for the drip irrigation hooks up. So water goes in here, it goes through its thing, it sucks the fertilizer from this bucket through this tube, up through here and then out there. And out here, this is the main line that all the mum waters are off of. And you can see that there are secondary lines. This is a three quarter inch orchard tubing. And this is a one half inch orchard tubing. The blue side is up so that all of the drip emitters are facing the same way. And so then, I have these on here in case the water pressure is, is an issue. I can turn off half at a time and water half and half, but so far that is not an issue. So then uh, what we do is we have on the secondary lines, we have these drip emitters evenly spaced. And these guys are called spiders. And so they go off in groups of four and they go directly to the mums. So the water is pushed through the main line, down the secondary, and then it, once the pressure builds up, it comes out these drip emitters. In doing this this year, we did find an easier way to do this, and it's that you hook up your main line, you get the water going in it, you get the pressure built up, and then you start putting in your attachments off of that. Having the pressure in the line gets you a little more wet, so do it on a day that it isn't rainy and gross or wear rain clothes, whatever. Um, but it gives you more pressure and tubing is less likely to collapse on you. It just makes it easier to get the pieces put in where you need to. And then um, as you're going and you're putting in all the drip emitters and the spiders, it also makes it easier to push those in. And then you can make sure right then and there that water is coming out. And so make sure that your drip emitters work as you're putting them in. So this is the new pump, same brand as my old one. I really liked that one. And this one, instead of being an adjustable rate, I went with the 1 100th rate because all my dilutions are for mums are 1 100. So this is the Chemalizer CH 9000 210 HN 55 1 to 100 Viton. 
Mine is an adjustable rate and I think that something inside of it broke when it got too cold. And so bring these in in the winter guys. I think that that's my issue. And so I'm gonna order a replacement for this one. So I have two, or not this one, for my other one. So that I have two. But this is super easy, basic, uh, just how the other one is. And so um, we are going to get going on this and put it up and I will show you how it goes. So I have that mounted there and I have it a lot higher than normal because when these uh, fertilizer suction tubes, uh, when they are lower to the ground, that coils up in the bottom and sometimes this end starts sticking up. So I don't wanna deal with that. So I raised it so then that way I don't need to worry about that. So last year what I ended up doing is I put a digital timer on the inflow of here and uh, or before the inflow I guess I should say and so I had one channel it's a four prong one like that and so one channel was for water going into the fertilizer injector another one was for pumpkin uh, drip another one was for high tunnel drip and I think I had two channels here in the high tunnel I will eventually get to that, but not today. I just want to get this up and working and get these wa get these mums watered uh, because I've been putting it off because I'm filming this and it's hot and so I just need to get them watered. So I'm going to wait in doing that. I also have a filter and a anti-siphon valve, whatever those are called, uh, to put on here too. I won't put it on in today's video just because they're up at the house and I want to get this finished. All right, so I can actually take all of this extra off and just put that hose end right here on there. Right now it's got a male hose end and I can actually switch it to a female and that will end up being perfect. I'll put it here behind this board to hold, hold it in place. That is gonna fit perfectly right there. Need to put another screw in this board too. So this is where I'm gonna put my filter. It's a spin filter. I took it off of the old uh, setup that I have. And then uh, the anti-siphon valve. Uh, I do have one up on the main hydrant where this water line comes from, but I'm gonna also put another one right down in here because I took that whole section apart on my other pump that had the anti-siphon valve on it and that had a bunch of bypasses and it was kind of complicated. So um, I took the anti-siphon valve off and I'm gonna put it down here and then that way all that heavy stuff is not gonna be up here on that. So with the chemilizer, this is actually the pump. This is a series of chambers that make the water go through or something, I have no clue. But this is the actual pump and so this part here goes up and down and when you install these you want to make sure that the pump is all the way up and kind of locked into place and this is what keeps breaking off on mine and so i don't know is that brittleness from being in the high tunnel or what i don't think so but um i guess this is mine uh, my other one and so my other one is really big and it th this part here on the bottom it twists and it's got a big thing on it so you can adjust how much uh, this comes in and out so that you can have more or less fertilizer. So um, these are the directions. It's pretty simple. You put this in uh, kind of like that and you find the, the, there's like a notch here so you find where that goes and you push it in. Oh great two-handed job okay got to put the camera down okay so I'm not sure if you can see in there there's two blue notches and that is what lines up here with these guys so it won't go any further 
uh, once it gets in those notches. So next I'm going to put it back up there. Okay. Then let's see. That goes turned that. I remember turning it. So then this goes here. This gets taken off. So this is what the fertilizer goes from a tube here, up through here, out into this tube that's right there. And then it goes up and this is where it gets mixed with the water as it's going out. I really should have brought a tripod down with me because this is not easy one-handed. That was easy. should have said that to begin with and maybe everything would have been easier. So then this tube here attaches right there and it hangs down into this bucket. The bucket I have though, this has a twist on lid with a hole in it, so I got to go find the lid, take the old tube out, put the new tube in. So this is what it looks like when it's completely done. I need to get this so it's a 90 degree angle instead of going that way. I don't want to put pressure there. But um, like I said, there's going to be a filter that I mount right here and then another uh, anti-siphon valve on here as well. Now I have to get the fertilizer mixed up uh, here in the bucket so that uh, we can see if it works and see if there's any leaks. All right, here we go. Hopefully I have no leaks. If I have some because it's so high, I'm gonna get soaked. Now I should start seeing fertilizer coming up this tube pretty soon. It takes a bit. It said I might have to manually prime it and I hope not. Yep, it's coming up. I don't know if you can see that in there. So you'll see it's getting up here and it's going to come up and it's going to go through here and go up there, mix with the water. There we go. So this is the secondary line. There's the main line and that right there is the drip emitter and then this is the spider or drip tubing. So you can see the water's coming out. It comes out that little hole up at the top. And then when it's in the pot, it just runs right down that black stake. And so then you just stick it in the, there and the water goes down the little black thing and into the soil. So then everything gets nice and damp. So we got probably about 80% of this done and I ran out of drip emitters. I didn't count right, didn't do my math right. And so we have a handful, it's the six inch pots and a handful of the eight inch pots that still need drip emitters. And so I'm gonna take and show you guys with one from last year, um, show you how to put them in and how they work. I really struggled for the two years that we had these, getting them to work properly. So I don't know if it was just our setup didn't have enough pressure or if potentially uh, there's something wrong with these emitters. So I'm gonna give it a go, make sure that these ones work as I'm putting them in and then we can go, um, I can just keep going and hopefully get the rest of this finished. So th this one here is not very sharp, but you just push it in. We used to have a tool that you push it on. I'll have to go look for that. And it'll poke a hole. I'm almost through. There we go. All right, so I'm in. So now water should be coming through there and it is not. 
so it is definitely the drip emitters that we had last year these are toro ones and they're just not very good which kind of stinks so I'll use this as, as an example though. So then what we do, we have our spacing set up. Everything's, everything is laid out according to the spacing. And then so uh, somebody goes through and they put all the spiders in. And then when it's all done, you just push this right on there and it holds itself into place. It kind of snaps on there. And then theoretically you will have watered mums. Since those drip emitters don't work, what I'm going to do is I'm going to water these by hand one more time. I ordered another thing of drip emitters. I hope they're the right size. I ordered some off of Amazon. They came, I think it was yesterday, and we tried putting them on and the ends were the wrong size. So they were too little for to hold the spiders on. So um, I'm hoping these next ones do the trick and I'll just water the rest of these by hand which is what I've been doing so that's not that big of a deal I just am really looking forward to being done watering by hand and to get these on a timer so that I have a little bit more free time but that is it for today's video thanks for tuning in I'll see you guys next time